In this video, we're going to go through the Unit 5 practice test to kind of show you how you should do each type of problem. So the first skill is about finding the area between two curves. So we're going to be given some region that's described, and we're going to find the exact area. Um, so let's draw the picture first, and then we'll kind of talk about what we're supposed to do. Let's do this with straight lines instead. That's the exact Exact picture isn't super important, but you should have the general idea. So 3x squared minus 7 is just a parabola. Looks something like that. And then 3x minus 1 is a line that looks like that. I drew it a little bit too high, but you get the basic idea. Actually, it's just a redraw, so it's closer to what you want. All right, 3x squared minus 1. So we're looking for this area in here. And the general idea when you're finding an area in the x direction is going to be the area of the top function minus the bottom function. All right, so here we can see our top function is going to be our line and our bottom function is going to be our quadratic, the parabola. But the thing we don't know is this point here and that point there. We need to figure out where we start and we stop. Well, that happens when these two functions are equal to each other. So I'm going to take 3x squared minus 7 and set it equal to 3x minus 1. All right, the way I solve quadratics as I move everything to one side. So I'm going to subtract 3x squared, or not 3x squared, 3x from both sides, and add 1. Right, so this is my equation. I need to divide everything by 3 just to make the number smaller. Minus 2 equals 0. And this one I can factor numbers that add to negative 1 and multiply to negative 2. That is negative 2 and positive 1. And that gives me positive 2 and negative one for an answer. All right, so those are the starting and stopping points. Of course, negative one is on the left and two is on the right. So my integral is gonna be the integral from um, negative one to two. My top function is the line minus the bottom function is the parabola. Before you start doing anti dirigibles and stuff, see if you can just simplify just a little bit, and which we can here, just a little bit. Negative one to two. We have three x. We have a minus one and another minus negative seven, so that's plus seven, which is going to be plus six, and then minus three x squared. Dx. And now I have to take anti derivatives, so it's going to be three x squared for two plus six x minus x cubed evaluated from negative one to two. Right. I'm going to plug in two first. And so I plug in two. And I'm going to subtract when I plug in negative one. And in general, I like to simplify things separately. I have to weigh this minus sign. I don't really have to worry about it to the very end. So it's going to be let's see, 12 divided by 2 is 6 plus 12 minus 8. That's going to be 18 minus 8 is 10. On the other side, negative 3 squared is positive. Um, so it's going to be 3 over 2 minus 6. And this is negative 1 times negative plus 1. That's going to give me um, 3 halves minus 5, which is, let's see, 5 is 10 over 2, which so is negative 7 over 2, which this double negative, now that I actually want to combine the numbers, turn into a positive. Um, and 10 is 20 over 2, plus 7 over 2 is 27 over 2. All right, so this one we fully worked out. It's quite a long process. Right, you have to think about what the graph looks like. You got to figure out where your stopping and starting points are. You got to um, take the antiderivative and evaluate all this stuff. So there's a lot of steps, right, but we've learned each individual step and it's just being careful along the way. And chances are I made a mistake because um, I'm doing it while I'm recording the video. Right, but always just kind of check along the way. Right, if I take the derivative of this, do I get back to here? I right, plug in these values. You'll have a calculator. I wasn't doing it with the calculator, so you can 
um, be a little bit more careful with these numbers that you're doing. I have to just make sure you get down to a final answer for this problem because it's asking you to find the uh, actual final solution. All right, for the next question, just because that's a long process, I'm not going to make you do the whole process again, just parts of it. So in this case, we just want to get to a point where we have the integral set up because taking the antiderivative and plugging in those numbers takes a while. So uh, what is our kind of picture going to look like? Let's do that first. I don't know, negative x squared is just an upside down parabola. 2x squared minus 9, because that's a positive 2, that's going to be a right set up parabola. All right, so I'm going to find some area like this. Right, again, I don't know where the stopping and starting point is, so the kind of main work you have to do in this problem is just set these things equal to each other. Here, I want to get 0 on one side, so I add that to the other side. And I can factor out a 3x. Give me x minus 3. Right, so we get x equals 0 and x equals 3. All right, so my picture is not right. This uh, blue probably has actually shifted a little to the left. All right, but the picture is good enough. Um, and now I can write my expression. Right, my integral expression starts at 0, ends at 3. My top function is actually the upside down parabola. So my top function is negative x squared. And I subtract my bottom function, 2x squared minus 9x. All right, and that's where you stop. I don't, I mean, you could combine these to make it look a little bit nicer, but why would you if I'm just asking you to make up the integral that represents the area? I'd right, stop there. It's, I can see you have the bounds right. You have the top function minus the bottom function. That's what I'm going to be looking for on the test. All right, one more. Again, it's really going to be the same thing, but let's just think about what the graph looks like. All right, we have the square root graph, which I know just looks like that. One third x. Something like that. And you can see this tiny little area in here that I'm trying to find. So I got to figure out where they hit each other. Well, one part's kind of obvious they hit each other at zero, but let's just figure out where else they can hit each other. I can square both sides of this expression to get rid of that square root, subtract the x to the other side, All right, factor, which means I could just pull out this common x. All right, and then each of these can be equal to 0, so I get x equals 0, and 1 third x minus 1 equals 0, so 1 third x plus 1, which means x equals all right, so 0 and 3, again, just a coincidence, that's the exact same as the previous problem. All right, but now I do 0 to 3 in my picture. And this one, you might have to use a graphic calculator just to double check, but my top function is the square root function, and the bottom function is the linear. And all of that is a dx at the end. All right, so you can see when you're setting it up, you just need to figure out where the bounds are, and then do top function minus bottom function. All right, if this was a problem you had to fully work out, now you have to do antiderivatives and plug-in stuff. All right, but that's just long and tedious, so this is enough for this skill. All right, our next skill is about the same thing, but now doing it in the y direction. So the first question is um, pretty much the exact same thing you just did um, in 5a. You gotta just write the um, area if it was in the x direction. So we know it's going to start and stop when these things are equal to each other. What I would do here is I'd subtract 1 from both sides and then divide both sides by a negative and I just get x squared to the square root of x. I would square both sides comes x to the fourth. Subtract this over. Generally when you're solving anything that's not linear you just get 0 on one side and so I can factor out. I get x equals 0 and x equals 1. All right, so my integral, just like the previous one, all right, top function minus bottom function. How am I going to figure out which one is which? Um, I haven't graphed them. Uh, you could use a graphing calculator. Also, just think about what happens if you plug in a number in the middle here. So I plugged in like a half. If I plugged in a half here, I get 1 minus a fourth. I get 1 minus the square root of half, which would be a number bigger than a half. So this would be starting a bigger number. So I think this one's going to be the top function. 1 minus x squared minus 1 minus square root of x. 
I, that I'm just did in my head, so I might be wrong. But graph those real quick. I figure out which one's on the top and which one's on the bottom. All right, now we're going to change our perspective to be in the y direction. So the first thing we need to do if we're in the y direction is we don't want them to be y equals anymore. We want to be x equals. So I got to solve each of these equations for uh, x. So if y equals one minus x squared, subtract one. Get rid of the negative by multiplying everything by a negative, and then take the square root. And do the same thing for the other function. Really similar, subtract one, get rid of the negative. And in this case, I'm going to square everything. So now you could go through and figure out. Um, when these two things are equal by setting them equal to each other, but we already have all this information about when the x values are equal. And every point where they're equal has an x and a y value. So I can just take these x values and plug them into these functions up here to get the y values. So when I plug in, uh, let's do it in green, I guess. When I plug in x equals zero, I get one minus zero squared, which is one. So y equals one at the starting point. And at x equals one, I get one minus one squared, which is zero. All right, so my y values are zero and one. So now I can figure out my integral. It's gonna go from the y value zero, the lower y value, to the higher y value one. And when I'm doing it in the y direction, I do the right function minus the left function. So again, if I plugged in like a half, this is gonna be a half squared is one fourth. This is gonna be one minus half, this is the square root of one half, which is bigger than one half. So I'm pretty sure this is going to be the bigger one. Again, graph them and figure it out just to make sure you don't make a quick mistake like I'm trying to do in my head real quick. Okay. So it actually looks the same. It's not always going to be the same zero and one. This just happened to work out that those are the um, things, but these are the y values at the starting stop. Right, these values here. All right, so make sure you're using the y values, the right function minus the left function. And another important thing that I'm going to be looking at is that you put dy, right? Because dx means you're adding up in the x direction, all these kind of vertical columns. dy means you're adding up in the y direction, all these horizontal columns. I right, just so make sure you have that dy instead of dx. All right, this problem is already in x equals. All right, so we don't have to do that step. We're doing it in the y direction. And this one's also nice. They tell us where our starting and ending points are. So this one, we're just gonna do the integral. Let's do it in black. The integral from two to four. And it even tells me what's on the right and what's on the left. It's on the right by three y minus four, minus what's on the left, y squared over two. I don't know why I put a three there, because it's a two. As this one's really nice in terms of them telling you stuff. And a lot of times on the AP test, they actually do give you this much information because they don't want you to spend five minutes doing all the prep work. They just want you to see, can you do this specific part of this problem? So this one, all right, let's just distribute that, well, multiply by that negative first just so we can see it all as one thing. Now I need to take the antiderivative. All right, this one's going to be kind of annoying just because of the fractions that you get. This is y cubed. Dividing by another three gives me six. I evaluated from two, two to four. Plug in two first. So when I plug in two, and I don't, I don't know why I did that. Because what should you plug in first? You should plug in four first, because that's the top value. I hope that you recognize that as quickly as I did. Right, and now I'm going to subtract. Now I plug in two. I plug in the bottom bound second. And from here, it's just all simplifying. Um, let's see, 16 by two is eight, eight times three is 24, minus 16, 64 over six, minus four over two is two, six, minus eight, over six. All right, here's what will happen a lot on the AP test is they don't want you spending a lot of time getting common denominators. So if this was a multiple choice question, they'll actually just combine 
the ones that are a fraction. So that would be negative 64 plus 8 over 6. All right, so 64 plus negative 64 plus 8 is negative 56. And they'll combine all the whole numbers. So 24 minus 16 is 8. This is plus 2 is 10. So you might see your the final answer like this um, on the AP test. If you wanted to, you can find a common denominator here and actually combine. Actually, it's not too hard in this one because it's a 10. So 60 over 6. That's 56 over 6 is 4 over 6, which is 2 over 3. All right, so you might see the answer uh, with the fraction still or without the fraction still on the AP test. But for this one, I just simplify as much as you can. Um, you have calculators, so it shouldn't be too hard to kind of simplify and make sure you get the right answer um, once you have all the calculus work done. All right, our next skill is about the average value of a function. So what's the average value of a function? All right, you have to add up all the values. So adding up the values is doing the integral. You're adding up all the values of my function. And you divide it by the number of values. Well, in here, we just have like an interval of values, however far it is from B to A. So this is the average value of a function. It's just a formula you have to know. But again, this kind of reasoning behind why it's a formula. It's not just kind of coming out of thin air. Right, you're adding up stuff. That's the integral. You're dividing by the amount of stuff. That's how long the interval is. All right, now you just have to apply that formula a couple of times. All right, here, we want to find the average value of this function. So we're just going to do 1 over 2 minus 1 integral from 1 to 2 of 3x squared dx. This is luckily just 1 over 1. All right, so I have to anti-differentiate 3x squared, add 1 to the exponent, divide by the new exponent. But those cancel out, just give me x, x cubed. Right, I plug in 2 first, plug in 1 second, and I get 7. So the average value of 3x squared from 1 to 2 is just 7. I hear a lot of things simplified pretty nicely. It's not always going to be the case. I basically, this first fraction just completely disappeared because it was just 1 over 1, and it become a much simpler problem after that. I have this problem. That first part's not going to happen. i got to do the average value formula. Right, but here I'm going to have that 1 over 6 stick around the whole time. Now it's actually not just going to disappear to a 1. All right, so 1 over 6 is going to hang out at the front. And inside the integral, I do my reverse power rule. So 4x squared is going to be, sorry, 4x is going to become 2x squared. 2 is going to become minus 2x, evaluated from 0 to 6. Some people here would multiply in the 1, 6. I just keep the 1, 6 here the whole time, evaluate all this to a single number, and just multiply at the end. Right, remember here, I plug in 6 first. Then I subtract when I plug in 0. I plug in 6. 36 times 2 is 72 minus 12. And all of this just becomes 0. And I get 10 as my final answer. Again, all the parts you already know how to do. As long as you have the formula memorized correctly, you're careful with keeping this fraction there the whole time until the very end I right, and just doing this um, integral to know we how the way we know how to I right, do the antiderivative plug in the top bound subtract when you plug in the top bound sorry bottom bound um, it's a lot of stuff going on but as long as you just keep track of it all right, you should be fine all right and our final skill is about application problems with position velocity and acceleration so just remember if you're doing derivatives position goes to velocity velocity goes to acceleration. If you're doing integrals or anti-differentiation, differentiation, you go backwards. You can't see the green, so I'll do it in blue. All right, so that's really what you have to remember. They're in order, position, velocity, acceleration. You just have to know which way you go. So here, in this first problem, we're given velocity. We're going to find possible expressions for position and acceleration. So if I want to go from velocity to position, that's going up this change. I have to do an antiderivative. So this is going to be the same as the antiderivative of 6t squared minus 8t plus 3. So this is position. All right, and that's going to be, let's see, t cubed, 6 divided by 3 is 2. 
t squared, 8 divided by 2 is 4, plus 3t, plus c. All right, so that's my position graph. All right, c could be any number. Um, we're not sure what it is, but it's a possible um, position graph based on my velocity. And now if I want to go from velocity to acceleration, that's going down this chain. So now I have to take the derivative. So acceleration is the derivative of velocity. It's going to be 12t minus 8. No plus c because I'm doing derivatives. Um, so this is just making sure that you know um, from velocity, you do one thing going backwards to position, you do antiderivatives. And then going forwards to acceleration, you do derivatives. Right, so just make sure you're keeping those straight. It's always helpful to kind of write these down in order so you know which direction you're going. In this problem, they give us the acceleration of the particle. They give us some values of the velocity and position. And we're going to find the exact function for the position. All right, but again, acceleration is the lowest one down. So we're going to, have to do antiderivatives going back up. So velocity is the antiderivative of acceleration. So the antiderivative of 12t plus 6, oops, forgot the t, which is going to be t squared, 12 divided by 2 is 6, plus 6t, plus c. But they tell me when I plug in 0 into this function, I get 2. And 0 is the best one because when 0 is plugged in, all the t's go away, and it basically just tells me that c equals all right, so c equals 2. All right, so now I know my velocity function is 6t squared plus 6t plus 2. All right, but how do I get from velocity to position? I do the same thing. If I have, um, if I want position, so this is the antiderivative of velocity, which in this problem is the antiderivative of 6t squared plus 6t plus 2, which is going to be t cubed the 2, t squared, the 3, plus 2, t plus c. Okay. If they didn't give me 0, I'd have to like plug this in and solve for c, but it's really nice when they give you the 0 because all the t's go away and that basically tells me c is 5. So my final answer for position, 2t cubed plus 3t squared plus 2t plus 5. So if I plugged in 0 into position, I get 5. If I plugged in 0 into velocity, I get 2. If I took all these derivatives, I'd get back to my acceleration. Right, a particle moves with velocity of v of t equals 6 t minus 2. How much does its position change from time t equals 3 to t equals 5? Right. So before, if I just want to go from velocity to position, I just took the antiderivative. If I want to fit an exact change between two places, the only difference, instead of having just a general antiderivative, I actually do the definite integral with those values. So my position is going to change from 3 to 5, and I take the antiderivative of velocity. So it's just knowing, again, if you're going backwards from velocity to position, you have to do an integral. You have those values, so where else would they, get, would they go? They have to go on the integral. All right, so it's going to be t squared with a 3, minus 2t, evaluated from 3 to 5. I plug in 5 first. Subtract when I plug in 3. Um, and since I'm finding 25 times uh, 3 is 75, minus 10. Uh, 27 minus 6. I get 44 at the end. Again, I haven't given you units um, 44 units if this was the velocity was giving in meters per second that would be 44 meters if it was in miles per hour that it'd be 44 miles it's whatever the distance unit is All right, but again the important thing is knowing that if you want to go from velocity to position you're doing an integral an antiderivative if you want to know the change to a certain value you're putting those on the integral all right so this test is short in relation to some of the other tests we had there's only four skills i right, we learned them really quickly all right so just make sure that you Look over the practice test, make sure you know those skills. Um, the really most mathematically challenging thing is when you're like setting those equations equal for the first two skills. Um, so just make sure you're comfortable uh, solving the equations that are in this uh, practice test and prepare for the um, actual test coming up.